do you want higher fps and smoother gameplay without even upgrading your graphics card overclocking your nvidia graphics card safely can unlock extra performance for absolutely free here's a step-by-step -step guide using msi afterburner to overclock it superposition benchmark to actually measure performance uplift and occt at the end to properly stress test your graphics card to ensure no crashing so let's get right into it simple what you're gonna get is 15 to 30 more fps in games like Black Ops 6, Call of Duty Warzone, and Marvel Rivals. This is only for those games. If you're playing games like Fortnite, Valorant, you're not gonna see that much of a benefit unless it's a very, very lower end graphics card like a GT 1030. So if you have anything above a GT 1030, overclocking your graphics card for Valorant, Fortnite, you're not gonna really notice anything unless you're turning up the settings a lot. So in Fortnite, if you're gonna turn up ray tracing, you're gonna turn on epic graphics and all that, overclocking it will definitely help. Anyways, let's get that out of the way. So let's get started. So the programs that you're gonna need are gonna be linked in description we're gonna need msi afterburner of course and we're gonna need uni engine superposition benchmark and once you get those two downloaded just have them on your desktop and now just a disclaimer regarding your gpu's power cables and power supplies so if you have a power supply that is barely enough to handle your graphics card this might cause some issues just make sure that your power supply is good enough to handle your graphics card if you're on a 500 watt power supply and you have a 3080 in your pc that's probably going to be a problem so make sure to upgrade your power supply or just don't even do a gpu over clock just leave it stock the second thing is using the correct pcie cables on your graphics card you need to make sure that it's two separate cables going into the two ports on your graphics card if you only have a single port don't even worry about it but if you have two power ports or three power ports you need to make sure it's a separate cable going to all three or all two directly from your power supply you can't just use the one cable with the extension that's going to cause a lot of problems and could potentially just completely ruin your graphics card so don't do that and the third thing is if you're on a 40 series graphics card or a 30 series with a 12 volt power cable then just make sure it's not bending if it is bending a lot you're going to have problems it's kind of different compared to the three regular ports but if you have a 12 volt power cable make sure it's not bending that much and then you're good to go now we're going to set up msi afterburner so just open up the zip make sure you uncheck norton 360 for gamer this is complete bloatware this so just leave it unchecked click install then okay next except check reva tuner statistics server you don't need this to have msi afterburner it's completely useless for this video press next and install this uncheck just leave run msi afterburner check press finish and now it's going to launch in this whole horrible ui just click the gear icon on the top left and check these three right here standard msi change to third party then go to user interface and change this to msi cyborg afterburner skin white press apply press yes on that and then just max out the core voltage if this is unlocked and max out your power limit and your temp limit if you don't care about the fan speeds coming from your graphics card just max this out as well now let's just say the core voltage slider is locked it's completely grayed out you can't for some reason change it at all here's what you're going to do you're going to close out of msi afterburner you're going to go to your file and then program files x86 msi afterburner and then you're going to go to profiles and you're going to double click this one right here click notepad and you're going to pretty much go to the description and copy text that is needed to be placed in here in order to unlock your voltage slider so let's just show you guys what that's going to look like all right so make sure to have everything highlighted here and press Control v once you have it copy pasted and all it's going to add this settings vddc generic detection right here at the end and this is going to make it so the voltage slider can be controlled and you can see the voltage that the graphics card is running on so just press file and then save and you can close out of that and then just open up msi afterburner again and you'll be able to use your core voltage slider then make sure to turn on the startup button what this startup button does be anytime you start up your pc it just runs a task and task scheduler that automatically applies the overclock and you don't have to have msi afterburner running in the background now if you want to set a custom fan curve for your graphics card you are going to have to have msi afterburner running in the background which will add input lag to your games so if you don't want that just don't set this to a custom fan curve just set to static speed and then you're good to go click this gear icon on the bottom go to monitoring and we're going to uncheck everything except gpu temperature and core clock memory clock and gpu voltage and power limit but everything else make sure to uncheck it because we don't need it there we go so now we're going to run a baseline run of the superposition benchmark so make sure to install it if you have not already installed it open up this and click the gear icon turn off these two right here go to benchmark and then preset if you're on a 30 series graphics card or above set this to 8k optimized however if your vram is around 4 gigabytes or somewhere around 6 you might have to set to 4k or 1080p extreme that's if you're on 4 gigabytes of vram you just want to make sure that this slider doesn't go above the vram that you 
you already have. So now all we're going to do is when you have MSI Afterburner running in the background and scroll down, just make sure you have GP voltage right here. If you don't have it, then go back a little bit and do the same thing that I did to unlock the core voltage slider in order to have this right here. All we're going to do is we're going to run this superposition benchmark. It's going to run at the max graphics. Ignore your FPS in this benchmark because this is just to max out the graphics card and get the max results on this graphics card. And we need to make sure that we're getting a performance increase in the score at the end of this benchmark anytime we increase the core clocks or memory clocks on the graphics card. So I'm going to let this run. It does take about five minutes every time you run this test. So just keep that in mind. All right. So as you can see, this is the baseline run and this is the score with nothing done to the graphics card except maxing out the power limits and maxing out the fan speeds. As you guys can see, voltage dropped all the way down to around 0.875. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually undervolt the graphics card to around 900 millivolts. Now, depending on your graphics card, I will either set it to 1000 millivolts or 900. It's however, if you don't really have a temperature problem and your graphics card runs pretty cool, you don't have to do this at all. But I still recommend locking your graphics card at a certain voltage. So as you can see, for example, the graphics card running at 1075. So I will lock it at this if I didn't want to undervolt. Since I want to undervolt and overclock the graphics card, I'm going to set to 900. For me, I know for my specific graphics card, 900 is where I get the most temperature reduction and the most performance uplift with overclocking. So for you, it might be at a thousand. I know on 40 series graphics cards, they're really, really power efficient. So you can just run them at a thousand right here and then you're good to go. Let's just say you're on 30 series. I'd recommend undervolting it. It's like 975 or lower or even 950. And then you're good to go. Just press that apply button and you'll see that this drops and then this drops right here. Once you have this done, what you're going to do is four clock. I would recommend starting at around plus 90 and you want to go up in increments of 15. Now memory clock, I'd recommend starting off at 500. Press the apply button and you will see that it applies on the left right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run this benchmark one more time. We're going to see the score at the end. All right. So as you guys can see, we gained around 200 points on this test. So now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the memory clock a little bit more. So usually I'm able to extract around 800. For you, I would try a thousand. If the score doesn't go up that much after setting it to a thousand from 500, that means it's error correcting. And that means that a thousand is not actually stable. So what I would do is I would drop it down by 150, see if the same thing happens or if it gains more. If it does, that's probably your max right there, which is going to be probably 850. It just depends on your graphics card. Almost all 30 series and 40 series graphics cards should be able to do around 1000. Now, if it's a really, really bad 40 series or really, really bad 30 series, like it's just not going to do anything about 500. It's literally just going to stay the same at anything about 500. So in that case, just stick to 500 and then just focus on your quarter clock, which is going to be a little bit more important. I'm going to run it at 800 and you want to do these one by one. Don't do both at the same time. So first max out your memory clock and then max out your quarter clock. So for me, I'm going to try 800 now and see if that goes up in performance. So as you can see, my score did not go up at all on plus 800 so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna try 650 and i'm gonna see if this goes up in score if it doesn't we're sticking to 500 on this overclock all right so as you can see we're sticking with 500 just because the results are pretty much exactly the same at 500 650 and 800 so going above just error correcting it's not actually providing us more performance so now we're gonna go on core clock and i'm just gonna try 150 and just to speed that if it does give us a performance boost as i mentioned earlier you want to go up in increments of 15 so that could be going up by 30 going up by 45 just go up to the point where this test starts crashing that means you're way too high so just go down by 15 if it still happens, go down by 15 again and also make sure that the score at the end is going up. Let's run this one more time and see if the score goes up. So nice little uplift in the score. We got around 70 to 100 more points just from upping to 150 core clock. So now I'm going to try going up a little bit more. So I'm going to do 180 actually just to speed this up. I just want to get to a point where we start crashing and then drop it down by 15. So as you guys can see, boom, crashed right in front of us. So that's actually nice. So now what I'm going to do. I'm gonna drop this down by 15, so 165. Let's try that out. I know for a fact that 165 is usually the max on this graphics card. So this is probably going to run and actually give us a performance benefit. All right. So I don't know if the score went up, but regardless, we're just going to keep it at 165 and click save right here and say this as a profile. We're just going to lock this so we don't accidentally change anything and we can just load this profile anytime we want. What we're going to do is going to go actually do the stress testing of this overclock. Just because we ran that benchmark doesn't mean we're stable. You still have to run two more tests to actually ensure you're stable. 
table. All right, so head over to the two links in the description for the stress test. I'm going to mark them as stress test. So the first one's going to be this one. You want to just scroll down and click memtet.exe right here to download it. And then OCCT, this is just another tool that everyone knows about. Just click I understand and then press download. For now, we're just going to open up this memtest Vulkan. I'll let this run for around the standard five minutes. Make sure you get no weird errors. It'll tell you straight up if it errors. And if it does error, drop down your memory clock by around 100 and then run it again. You want to make sure you get zero errors around the five minutes of this test. And then in the OCCT test that I will show in a second, you also want to make sure you get zero errors there. Going to run this for five minutes and then I'm going to show you guys how to run the OCCT test. All right, guys. So open up OCCT after you've ran the memtest Vulkan for five minutes and you're going to go to 3D Adaptive and then you're just going to leave these settings how they are right now. Just press start on this, wait the 10 seconds and then press start. And usually I'd say around 30 minutes on this test with no errors, no crashes, and you're good to go. If you get an error or a crash, just start dropping down your core clock or your memory clock. Usually it's going to be core clock on this test. So just drop your core clock by 15 if it does give you errors or crashes. Just the goal is 30 minutes on this with zero crashes. And then you're pretty much good to go and you're overclocked for your GPU is good and done. So then, then you hop in games and actually notice that you're gonna get more performance, more FPS and smoother gameplay. However, let's just say for example, you crash in a game and it just doesn't happen for a while and then all of a sudden you get a crash in, for example, Call of Duty or Cyberpunk. If that doesn't happen, just drop it down by 15 and stuff like that is bound to happen just because GPU over clocking is best performed whenever you're playing games the only real test is actually playing games this stuff just gets it out of the way so it's less frequent to happen but it might still happen while you're playing your games so if that does happen just drop it down by 15 or by 100 on the memory clock and then you should be straight but realistically as long as you pass 30 minutes on this and five minute on mem test vulcan then you're pretty much good to go anyways guys that's gonna be pretty much it for this video hope you guys enjoyed and comment down below what overclocks you were able to achieve on your graphics card just to let other people know what they should be able I mean, their specific graphics scar just to help everyone out so comment that below make sure to share this video with anyone that plays call of duty warzone cyberpunk or any of these very graphic intensive games so they could get that extra free fps but other than that that's gonna be pretty much it for this video if you guys want all this done for you along with cpu and ram overclocking and windows optimizations then go to the first link in the description and book a pc optimization service other than that that's gonna be pretty much it for me guys peace out